I'm Luke. Hi, Becky. Good to meet you. But it is it is streaming currently.
would be here and that the words and memories that are shared today and brought to mind would be a blessing to each person and that you would bring comfort to them. We thank you for each person who's here and pray that your peace would, and your love be with each family member and friend who has a heavy heart. Please help us through this time, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This time Natalie has something she'd like to come and share. Would she have been so embarrassed by all of us making such a fuss about her? But she deserved it. She was so special and so sweet and so generous. And if there's one thing that we can all learn from my grandma, it's that love is unconditional. She loved everyone so much, especially my grandpa. And I think if soulmates do exist, then they definitely were. Smith was born April 3rd, 1956. She took her greatest journey that she will ever take on February 24th, 2021, when she entered into eternity. You know, the passing of a loved one is an emotional event in any person's life. It's when we're forced to stop and hurt because of the loss that we feel. It's when we, for a time, consider the natural cycle of life that ends in death. We're here today not to celebrate death, but to celebrate the life of man. And to honor the memories that she gave us in the way that she touched our lives. And each touch, each memory, weaves together to create an image of who Anne was and the impact that she had upon our lives. Her love for french fries and mayonnaise, her independence and her passion for travel and adventure, her love of art, stitching, stained glass, really anything creative that she could use her hands on. There's a story told of a two-sided tapestry, a beautiful 
beautiful rug or an embroidered wall hanging. It appears to be a mangled nest of knots and threads, loose ends, jumbled colors and patterns. That is with no pattern whatsoever, no design. There seems to be no plan. That is until the piece of art is viewed from the other side, from the other perspective. For on one side you see the work of the master's knots, the color changes, the different threads and materials, the folds, the creases, the frayed ends. But on the other side, when you view the creation, this masterpiece, from the other perspective, you see colors and patterns all neatly woven together, dramatic angles, bold lines, beautiful pictures, creating something that you could not have possibly imagined. And you see it, and you experience the power and the design of the Creator. We are like children, looking up at the masterpiece from below. We can suffer from confusion, be troubled, we suffer from misunderstanding, our lack of ability to follow the plan, the design, and the wisdom of the greatest, most powerful, most compassionate being that exists. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8 says this, that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them in. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. There is a time for war and a time for peace. The words of this passage that were written so long ago are obvious in their wisdom. They are powerful in their application. There is indeed a time for everything. And this time these words speak to us to bring comfort. And remembering and today, remember these words as well. Because they come to us from the only one who can truly comfort our souls. This is a time to plant new memories. And to bring up old ones to bring comfort to family and friends. This is a time to tear down differences and they have come between and build bridges to one another. This is a time to weep, but do not be afraid to laugh. This is a time to mourn, but remember to dance. This is a time not to scatter, but a time to gather together and draw upon each other's strength. This is a time to search out one another and to give up past hurts. This is a time to keep memories fresh. This is a time to mend old wounds. This is a time when silent comfort more to someone than a thousand words. This is a time for love, for peace. And we will only find true and lasting comfort in Jesus Christ, who is the source of all comfort. We can only find peace in Jesus, who is the source of all peace. We can only find love in Jesus, who is the source of all love. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 John 4, 19, that we love because he first loved us prayer for each of you here today is that you would all experience the comfort, the peace, and the love that comes to us through Jesus. And I pray that you would experience that today. This message of comfort comes from the only place I know where to find comfort. This message comes from the Bible, the very words of the author of all creation. I want you to know that I have prayed for you this day, that you would find comfort in Jesus Christ. There is no other person to turn to to find lasting comfort. Jesus himself, on the very night in which he was betrayed, he brought these words to his friends. He told them this in John chapter 14. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want you to hear the words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. 
But that is what our hearts feel when a loved one passes. We feel troubled. It's for a time that we're forced to look at our own mortality, at our own end. And Jesus wanted his disciples to not be troubled by what was about to happen. You see, he was about to die. And his encouragement to them was to trust in God, to trust also in me. You see, the comfort that Christ offered his friends that is the same comfort that he offers to us, to trust in God, to trust also in him. The reason these words can bring comfort to you is because of what Jesus did on our behalf. You see, each one of us has sinned. Because of this sin, we are separated from God. Not only are we separated from God, but we are deserving of His wrath. See, the comfort that Christ offers in the words He left His disciples, to trust in God, to trust also in God, is that He would bear that wrath on their behalf. And that's precisely what Jesus did when He died upon the cross. He took upon Himself the sins of His disciples, and He bore that wrath so that they would not have to, so that they would have no reason for fear. See, there because of Christ and what he has done on, on their behalf, but not only on their behalf, but on all who believe. For there is no wrath, because Jesus has taken it upon himself. The punishment that we deserve was laid upon him, so that one day we could be where he is. So you see, he has gone to prepare a place for you, if you put your trust in him. He will come and take you to be with him, if you put your trust in him. He is the only way to come into heaven, but only if you put your trust in him. So let me plead with you now to put your trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. It's only in Jesus where you will find comfort. It is only in Jesus that you will find peace. It is only in Jesus where you will find hope for this life and the life to come. Trust in Jesus. He will not be disappointed. He will comfort your soul throughout this life and into the next. Let me close the word of prayer. Father in heaven, your word says that you are the God of all comfort and the Father of all mercies. And so we come to you seeking comfort in the time, at this time. Our hearts are indeed saddened by the departure of Anne, but we are so thankful for the memories that we have of her life. Please be with each one who, as they leave this place, I pray your mercy and protection be with us all as we travel. Bless each one, Lord, with joy-filled memories of, of Anne as they remember her life. And once again, we thank you, Father. Now may your peace, mercy, and comfort be with all who are here. In Jesus' name, amen.